So, in uh, so far as far as three dimensions of space lattice is concerned, uh, we have only looked at uh, the, uh, the rotations and the mirror planes. We have not looked at some translational symmetry operators which are also present. For example, in case of 2D, you did have this glide plane. You were able to reflect it about a line and then move it by half the translation vector. That was a new symmetry operation that was possible in 2D. In 3D also the same thing is possible. Okay, It is called as glide plane or glide reflection. And in addition to that, you have something called as screw rotation. You rotate it by a certain amount. The amount is basically either one fold, two fold, not one fold, two fold, three fold, uh, four and six fold. And then you move it by a certain amount. You move it in the same di in a direction parallel to the rotation axis by a certain amount. Okay. These are called as screw rotations. Now, uh, glide reflections involves a translation by a vector g which is parallel to the plane of the glide reflection always okay. and the glide reflection is called the, 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 the uh, component the absolute value by which you are moving it is called as the glide component and this is usually one half of the lattice vector in a direction that is parallel to that mirror. Okay, we will see some examples, you will understand it is better. So, the most important thing is that you can have glide planes only in the regions where you can have mirrors because you are always going to reflect. The only thing that differentiates between pure glide and a mirror is that in a mirror you just reflect it whereas in a glide you are reflecting it and moving it either. If, the, if this is a plane of the mirror, you can reflect an object like that and then move it like that or you can move it like that. Okay, either way is possible. So, each of these movements have a specific uh, name associated with them so that we are able to identify what direction uh, the movement has actually taken place. So, a good example to take a look at would be this uh, the, uh, the glide planes that are possible in an orthrhombic system. Okay. So, in an orthrhombic system you basically have mirrors. Uh, which are having either the A axis or the B axis or the C axis as the normals, right? That those are the mirrors. Okay. So you obviously have the same set of uh, mirrors uh, here as well and here as well. Okay. It is enough for us to understand the kind of kind of glide operations that are possible on one face or one kind of mirror and to uh, so that we can introduce the associated nomenclature with the glide reflections. So, the first one what happens? So, this is a mirror this black line that is thick line that is there is a mirror and it has the uh, 1 0 0 as the normal and suppose we perform a reflection about this mirror and move it in the b direction by half the lattice vector then that is called as a b glide. Okay, that is called as a B glide. Similarly, if you have the same mirror, it is the same mirror except that now the glide is happening along the C direction here by half the lattice translation along the C direction and that is called as a C glide. So, you have C and B. Now, it is also possible for us to have a glide that is along the diagonal of this mirror. So, you can reflect it about, you can reflect an object about this mirror and then glide it by b plus c by 2 that is called as an n glide and then finally you have what is referred to as a diamond glide okay where instead of going uh, b plus c by 2 you go b plus c by 4 okay so the same set of b c n and d are also possible for uh, these mirrors except that the glide now cannot happen in the c direction right on this plane you can either have a a glide or you can have a b glide right or you can have a but so this will be called as this 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 if only this is present it will be called a corresponding b if, if this is present it will be called uh, sorry it will be called a and if only this is present it will be called b and if you have a combination like this, it will be B plus uh, A 
a by 2 and it will be called as the uh, n glide and so on b plus a by 4 will be called as the corresponding d glide. Okay. But uh, remember even though b c n d b c n d b c n d would essentially or something else uh, would essentially be the same for all the three uh, orthogonal mirror planes possible. The Hermann Morgen symbol will clearly tell us what that plane is because each of the slot will correspond to specific planes, right. For example, if you had um, A, B and C, okay. So, so this one this one cannot have an A glide. So, let us say um, a B glide, a A glide and a C glide. So, you clearly know that this B glide corresponds to this mirror, right? Because this slot corresponds to the mirror which has the 1, 0, 0 as the normal. This slot corresponds to the mirror which has 0, um, uh, 1, 0 as a normal and this one corresponds to 0, 0, 1 as the normal. So, by looking at this, the slot in which the glide is happening, it is possible for you to say in what direction or in what plane, mirror plane this particular glide has actually taken place, right, as far as orthorhombic is concerned. So, you know this may not be clear to you right now, but when we look at the space group symbols for those crystals which have a glide plane, it will be you will understand what exactly that means. So, you will have a, a this is basically a space group. So, if I say P, B, A, C, this is actually a space group, okay. Instead of saying P, M, 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 I am saying P, B, A, C. So, instead of saying, instead of having the mirror, I am actually having a glide plane in positions of the mirror. Okay, this is actually a space group. Now, what would be the point group of P, A, B, C? M, M, M. Because you just have to remove all associated translational symmetry operators and you would get the corresponding um, point group. Okay, the same thing applies to uh, every other space group that you can have. So, let us see some examples of glide reflections uh, just for clarity purposes. So, this is uh, a glide plane is present at x, y is quarter or b is quarter. So, this line that you are seeing here is basically the mirror, okay. And uh, this scalene triangle is what is being reflected and moved by half the translation vector. So, this is obviously an example of an A glide because you are reflecting this object about this mirror and this this shaded, uh, lightly shaded triangle is what is formed after you reflect it and then you are going to move it by half the translation vector, half the distance between 0 and this, this point here, this point here and you get the new position of this point. So, it is possible for us to find out if this is having a coordinate of x comma y comma z and this is actually having a fractional coordinate of quarter because the mirror is actually present at x quarter z right it is actually a long mirror which is coming out of the uh, plane of the board okay so what would be the corresponding coordinate here is what we would need remember the wickoff positions we talked about the wickoff positions the wickoff positions were all generated by applying the various symmetry operators to some point like we applied for example the four-fold rotation to an arbitrary point x, y, z and we generated all the other points within the unit cell. So, even when we talk about the Wyckoff positions for uh, a general position for a space group which has this glide thing, then you would have to apply this reflection and also the movement and also the glide component, right. So, you would have to calculate what is the new position after applying this uh, symmetry, opera, uh, symmetry operation which is reflection plus a translation, right. So, how do you kind of get these coordinates just to give you an example. So, if you have x, y, z then uh, uh, what would be this? This component here 
quarter minus quarter minus y this would also be quarter minus y right correct so the actual y coordinate here would be into 2 plus y that would be half minus y right and the corresponding x coordinate here so this this has the what would be the x coordinate here this x coordinate will be half plus x because it is just being moved half the lattice translation vector the corresponding y component would be half minus y and the z component would exactly be what it is z right so this is an example of a a glide right here so the it is this sort of operations which are actually applied in order to generate appropriate Wyckoff positions for the space groups which have these uh, symmetry, the glide operations. Now, let us look at an n glide. So, this is an n glide. The n glide, where is the n glide present? The n glide is present at x comma y at z equal to quarter. So, it is, it is present somewhere. So, this is the mirror plane, this, this greenish thing is the mirror plane. So, we are taking this triangle, the, the triangle that is there in the bottom, we are reflecting it about this plane and performing a glide which is half A plus B, half of A plus B and it takes this particular triangle to this particular spot. So, again it is possible for you to generate the corresponding coordinates of these uh, of the of the the triangle after this entire symmetry operation has been applied ok that is going to be half plus x half plus y and half minus z will be the coordinates of all these triangles right here. When you look at it from the top it just appears as moving there but actually it has been reflected about that plane and then moved like what you saw in the uh, three dimensional uh, image that I just showed you. Is that clear? You can look at another example where you have a C glide. So, this is an example of a C glide. So, you have a glide plane that is present at x half z. Okay. A coordinate x comma y comma z is present right here. It is being reflected. But after reflection, instead of moving it in the a direction, I am now moving it in the c the, in the perpendicular the page in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the paper, and that will generate these as the new coordinates any arbitrary point x y z will actually become x 1 minus y and half plus z uh, by the application of this glide. So, if I am if I am giving you a glide I am giving you an arbitrary point I am expecting you to be able to like look at it carefully and find out the corresponding coordinates after the symmetry has been applied. The symmetry does not involve only the mirror plane or the glide it involves a combination of both. Okay. It involves a combination of both. So, this is glide. So, what happens when you are talking about space groups is all the mirror planes you are you are enhancing the possibility of all the mirror planes also being glide planes which increases the number of uh, possibilities of symmetry that you can actually have uh, for various crystals. Another thing that happens which is only unique to uh, space lattices are the screw uh, rotations. Screw rotations, so, so screw rotations are actually uh, going to involve rotation and movement in a direction parallel to the direction of rotation. So, this is the axis of rotation, ok I am just taking an arbitrary example. So, I am going to take this atom here, I am going to rotate it by 60 degrees, but instead of keeping it there, I am going to move it up by some amount. Okay. Now, this some amount cannot be some arbitrary amount, right? because our symmetry operations has got to be uh, compatible with the lattice translations. Okay. So, if you imagine this entire thing that I have drawn to be a unit cell, then if there is one structure like this at the base of this unit cell, you are going to have to have another one right on top. Otherwise, they do not repeat themselves in the uh, 
in the direction of axis of rotation right so there is a specific rule that you have to th that you have to be careful about when you are actually applying these screw rotations and there are um, uh, very simple formulas that you can actually come up with so if you talk about the um, screw rotation so let us say you are rotating it by uh, 360 by x would essentially where x is basically the order of rotation basically 1 2 3 and 6 or 4 and 6 this would be the corresponding degree or the angle by which you are going to rotate that particular atom right now if you perform this rotation or this can also be written as if 360 degrees is equal to x multiplied by epsilon okay right if, if you perform the uh, 60 degree rotation six times you essentially get back the same position is equal to 1 right 360 degree, degree rotations now the question is by how much can you actually move it after the rotation by how much can you actually move it after the rotation so let s vector be the vector by which you can actually move it following the rotation okay x times s must be equal to the translation vector right x s times x times s must be equal to the translation vector so we will put the absolute values here right so but it need not actually be the entire translation vector it so happens that it can be an integral multiple of the translation vector okay we will see some examples and this will be a little bit more clear okay so consequently what happens s vector is equal to sigma divided by x times the lattice vector okay since s is the amount by which you are moving it it is obviously less than tau it is less than tau so by how much can it be how will you find out you know what what are all the various values that it can have so sigma can have values between 0 1 2 to x minus 1 correct so it can it can have uh, if this is a if for example if you are performing a two fold rotation we will see an example so that will make things much clearer so i have some figures here sure. huh? uh, when you are defining tau for this is for the lattice or like a general uh, tau this is a la uh, okay what the question is what is tau tau is basically a lattice vector a distance between two lattice points so in that case you, you shouldn't be having the sigma that side right sigma should be this side so that the integral multiples of the distance which you obtain from rotation should be equal to the lattice vector it need that's what I so it yeah so the thing is it need not be equal to one full lattice vector it can be integral multiple of any lattice vector so you you're rotating it you're moving it okay you're rotating it and you're moving it you're rotating it and moving it so let us take for example the six fold six let us take so uh, let us rotate by 60 degrees and move up one sixth of the unit cell okay let us rotate by 60 degrees which is precisely the example that is shown right here okay 60 degrees is rotated i have a better picture so if you just will allow me to open that if i perform a two fold rotation okay this is the unit cell whatever is marked tau that entire thing is a unit cell if i perform a two fold rotation and move it up here and move one full unit cell what does it mean I told you that this is a unit cell this entire thing is a unit cell which means if there is an element like this here there should also be an element like this here correct now at performing a two fold rotation and moving up moving it up by the entire tau made this new element correct now if this entire thing has to have translational symmetry it only means that this should also be present right so this is nothing but 2 2 what is 2 2 is nothing but just pure two fold rotation is equal to 2 0 right this entire thing now is just 2 0 or just possessing a two fold symmetry it does not possess any screw rotation right 
but now look at what happens when you do two fold rotation and move it up by half the amount i performed a two fold rotation moved it by half the unit cell okay again performed a two fold rotation and moved it by moved it up by half the rotation so now this can keep continuing and this pattern does have the two one screw rotation axis so how will you identify from this what what is you can from this you can identify two things one is you can identify what is the order of rotation that has been applied and you can also identify by how much of the unit cell this entire thing has been moved all you have to do is take this and divide it by this so 1 by 2 of tau has been moved so the s or the vector s through which this has been moved after the performance of rotation is tau by 2 or modulus of tau by 2 is this clear this is for the two fold rotation is fairly simple so in two fold rotation the only thing that is possible is screw rotation that is possible is 2 1 because 2 2 is nothing but a two fold rotation right so the, the extent by which you can move it will be what will be the maximum value it can have is x minus 1 by x times the lattice translation vector so x is 2 so 2 minus 1 by 2 times the lattice translation vector which is 1 by 2 times the lattice translation vector correct now let us see some slightly more involved examples and of course every every screw this this is this was the symbol for uh, just the two fold rotation axis present and this one this ellipse with this uh, tails right here is basically the symbol for 2 1 okay so uh, if you want to know this so so in our in our in our uh, mathematical uh, derivation of the expression for s we had sigma which is an integer by x which is the order of rotation times tau so the screw rotation is represented instead of in the Hermann margin symbol uh, if you want to represent the rotation axis you just say 2 or 3 or 4 or 6 if you want to represent the screw rotation axis you represent it by x suffix sigma x suffix sigma so in this case x was 2 2 orders of rotation and a sigma is 1 Consequently, the amount by which you need to move is nothing but sigma by x. Yes. So in, this case, you have tau by 4. in this case, you have tau by 4. No, there cannot be tau by 4. Why you have tau by 4 in this? No, this. No, 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 no. If you put 4 here, that means you are saying there is a 4 fold rotation. This is actually the order of the rotation that we will see fourfold rotations later. No, sir. Say like if you have the lattice assets, like in this case, and if you are going to have one, one point over here and one point over here, okay. and you are going to start rotating it uh, by uh, two fold. Okay, I have rotated it two by fold, and then? And then I am shifting it by one by fourth of the lattice vector. Uh, one by fourth of the lattice vector? Yes. Tau by, by tau by four. Yeah. Okay. No, then the unit cell is actually tau by ah, it shrunk. Yeah, the unit cell shrinks. If you look at that one particular unit cell, you only have uh, uh, two times that is happening. Yeah, it cannot be more than that. Okay. Yes. Huh. Yes. So, uh, 2 1 actually means that all the atoms of that unit cell are rotated by 180 degree and all of them are moved by yes. the translation vector. Yes. And after that, the unit cell will coincide with itself. Absolutely. It will do that. But, but do not ask what happens to the free surface. If you are rotating it and move, that crystal actually, the free surface actually moves up. We are not looking at the free, we are just assuming that this is just infinitely large. So, performing this operation is still able to coincide with an infinite array of atoms. Okay. 
that is what it exactly means it means that the entire thing which has the symmetry when rotated and moved will just coincide with itself and you will not be able to find out the difference okay now let us look at slightly more involved examples for another 5 6 minutes so this is the example of 3 1 so when you have a three fold rotation what are what is the uh, what so s would be equal to sigma by x times tau so what are all the various possibilities sigma is nothing but an integer x is 3 so sigma can be 0 1 and 2 so you can either have a movement of uh, 0 doesn't make is just the absolute rotation uh, you can have 1 over 3 and 2 over 3 so which means you can have a 3 suffix 1 screw rotation axis and 3 suffix 2 screw rotation axis as we have written here okay. it is interesting to see what happens when you perform a 3 1 and a 3 2 just to be clear on these things so I have marked the entire unit cell as tau okay this is the base atom right here moving it by 120 degrees and moving it by one third of the unit cell right tau by 3 moving it up one third of the unit cell this is just a shaded atom which is just indicating an intermediate step there is no atom there then again I am performing a uh, three fold rotation and moving it up three fold rotation and I am moving, mo moving it up so this is the entire this entire thing is basically one unit cell which which is uh, uh, commensurate with the lattice translation in the in the in the act along the axis of rotation you can keep repeating this unit cell and it will have this uh, feature of 3 suffix 1 right now what happens when we do 3 suffix 2 okay when we have 3 suffix 2 we rotate it by 120 degrees but move it by two thirds of the unit cell so consequently this atom comes here first and then it goes here okay right next this one rotates by 120 degrees and goes to the unit cell that is present on top of it right on top of it and it appears now if you are not um, paying attention you can get a little bit confused so now you you have to carefully see that this is what you define as your unit cell so if there is a structure here like this there has got to be one like this the application of 3 2 took this atom to this spot right now this one is only one layer above the base of the previous unit cell correct which means there must be an atom even here if lattice translation is to be respected in that direction correct now you rotate this by 120 degree and move by two thirds you will end up in this spot right so now this and this in what way they are different yeah one is uh, seems to be a counterclockwise rotation and going up the other one is a clockwise rotation and going up so these if you put a mirror right here okay right here and see how these atoms are being reflected you will see that since this is the atom and the mirror is passing through it it won't get reflected at all however in this layer this atom will get reflected over here correct and this atom will get reflected over here which is exactly 3 2 right right can you all see that so 3 1 and 3 2 are mirror images of each other and such pairs are called as enantiomorphous pairs is that clear 